miracle. For me, these fish mean life. These trees that are fed by these fish are making the oxygen we breathe. They are an energy cord, a power cord. They bring the energy of the sunlight hitting the ocean, makes plankton, fish eat plankton, the salmon eat these fish, and then they carry this all up the river in a delicious package. Everything loves to eat. They're bringing marine nutrients to this forest, to 137 species, to the First Nations communities, to the neo-indigenous, all of us who are new to this land but love it and live on it. Now, some people have said, well, now we have the salmon back, the problem is solved. But it's not. If we knew why there were so many fish this year and so few last year, the problem would be solved. But we're running blind right now. We have no idea why so many fish came back. What we do know, though, is the river and the fish can still survive. The ocean is giving them food. And it's up to us if we want to have this happen every four years. They have proven without a doubt that uh, fish farms do kill juvenile salmon when they, when they go up. And not only that, they destroy a lot of the uh, other marine life there. The Fraser sockeye salmon have been in decline for as long as these salmon farms have been having disease epidemics. And whether it's the introduction of open net uh, fish farms or uh, the clear cutting of the forest or the pollution of the waterways or the over harvestation that's been taking place of the fisheries or the changes in the patterns of the climate that impact uh, uh, the rearing and the spawning of, of fisheries. These issues are very much interrelated and interconnected. And it's going to be up to the people to come together. It's people who put governments in positions of authority that oversee and implement policies that have an adverse impact and it's people uh, that can affect the sorts of change that are required to once again bring us back to a place of, of balance and harmony in the relationship between people and the environment. bringing First Nations, environmental groups, citizens, everybody that we have ever seen on an issue like this. We've always been told that our drums beat like a heartbeat amongst our First Nations people. But I've heard all of us beating together on the drum. We shall move forward to make every effort that Alexandra has done to ensure that there is a place for our children. Some of us heard the minister in the house there have said, shame on these marchers because they're going to destroy the, the farmers' jobs. Never is there any mention of the people whose jobs are being destroyed right now. Our operators are, represent the people who take people from around the world to see the bears, the eagles, the whales. We're very concerned that our livelihood is, is going to disappear under the current regime of the farms. The farms brag about their 6,000 jobs in BC. That's total direct, indirect, and other jobs. 
our numbers are about 40,000 jobs. It all comes down to this. Do we live in a democracy or not? This is a test. to start on this this journey after so much planning and uh, I have a very good feeling about it I I really think there'll be thousands to walk with us I think we'll get to keep our wild salmon This paddle, I think, is bringing a lot of people together. There's a lot of voices happening out there, and uh, the media is out, and we have uh, all of our Aboriginal communities joining in, people coming over from the island later on. And it's bringing people together and understanding, you know, and then you move forward and it gives you the on and uh, stand up for what's right. And I feel that that's what we're doing. Yeah, 50 miles desert heat, dry and dusty road. Come on down here. Yeah, rain, rain. Come on down here. Rain. So it is that the Stalo, the Indigenous Peoples, First Nations, but indeed all British Columbians and Canadians, we've inherited a responsibility to take care of all living things that uh, we're interconnected with, that we rely on. And I know that the journey that's, that's uh, being undertaken here is symbolic of a bigger journey, of a, of a reconnection of people to the, to the world around them. There's an awakening happening and the Indigenous Peoples are helping to lead the way back so that we all understand how we're related to the to life around us, that the trees are and all all things are living. Come on down here. Come on down here. Come on down. We had a powerful arrival into Squaw. The sun was setting and the moon was rising. They were drumming us in and we raised our paddles in salute. And then we were welcomed into a warm place with food and speeches and singing. They let us spend the night here and they made breakfast for us. So we're well fed and happy. And we're headed out and it's day two of our paddle. We're going to Vancouver. I'm gonna tell Justice Cohen. Full disclosure of the salmon feedlots, we need nothing less.
This journey we're on is, uh, is uh, really important to all people. It's, it's important to the Stalo in particular um, because the Stalo have used the uh, uh, wild salmon that have, have come up the river for thousands of years. You know, our waters are our, our most precious resource and um, this, I mean the waters, the headwaters of the Tosico and the Chilco, which is a part of this wild sockeye run, is something that we must protect. We know what's wrong with our salmon. We know fish farms are having an impact. We know habitat destruction is having an impact. We know clear cuts are having an impact. So I think it's time they need to take action. I think Cohen is a great opportunity to get records on the table that we haven't seen yet from fish farms to get the truth about how much of an impact they're having. But between now and when they release their report next year, we need to be taking action. We're making the money more important than our, our natural heritage, and this is the problem. We have a beautiful coast here. We can live off this coast. It's a bountiful coast. We can have a seafood industry on this coast. We can have fishing on this coast. But a few people are able to make a lot of money with these fish farms, and it's the same problem that we've had throughout our resource harvesting history. We've learned the lesson in Norway. They learned in Norway that these fish farms kill the fish. So instead of fix the problem in Norway, they come to British Columbia to do the same thing here. They know that they're going to harm the salmon and kill off the salmon with these fish farms. But they do it because they can make money. That's the problem. It's been an inspiring story to, to see so many people come together, native and non-native, to uh, represent the salmon, to come right into Vancouver where the Cohen Commission is meeting to call for all of the truth to be uh, brought forward about the impacts on salmon, and particularly from the salmon farms. We need to see all of the science, we need to understand all of that data and what's really happening so we can make the best decision for the salmon and, and for our future. generations. We are honored to see the work that you are doing. We commend you for bringing the message on behalf of all of our families to implore the government and companies for accountability in the work that they are doing that impacts our future, that impacts our relatives in the water, it impacts our, our own well-being. We don't want to see activities that will hurt our future generations. So I thank you for standing up to implore the governments and the companies for accountability. Thank you for welcoming us. Thank you all for coming out in the rain. And really, I love you guys. Thank you for paddling with us for all these days. We're here to peacefully ask for the truth. We want our wild salmon. It's about our communities. It's about democracy. It's about our soul and our spirit. And if governments won't listen, we'll just have to keep doing this, but hopefully this will be enough. So we're here to support Justice Cohen in demanding full release of the disease information from every single salmon feedlot that our wild salmon are swimming by, because their diseases are passing over the gills of our fish. So thank you, thank you, thank you. walk over the bridge now to fight for the rights of the wild salmon. Walk with us on the end 
other side, you are welcome on the Muscogee Territories. After you've left here, we thank our mayor, and we like we'd like to thank the chiefs that came down here today. We are all one family today. strong message here that not only that Alexandra represents and the paddlers represent, but all British Columbians and Canadians want to see our wild salmon protected. We need to send a strong message to not only the Cohen Commission, but to the federal government that we need our wild salmon protected. just about salmon, it's about the democracy that we're losing. It's about our ability to survive. It's about our communities. And I want every one of you to know that you hold the power to change this. We are not livestock. We can think, we can vote, and we can do as we did today, powerfully, peacefully, make ourselves visible and make ourselves clearly understood. Wild salmon is my life. I started it back in 1986, and I'm not going to give up until I'm gone. The next seven generations will know about this. I am strong, I am woman, and I am standing up for my rights. From the north to the south, we stand up in alliance as First Nations to stand up for our salmon and our wild food sources. Great. We're with uh, David Campbell here at Gachet for the Salmon Inquiry Show. How are you? I'm doing fine, thanks. Doing good. So you do a lot of uh, songs of dedicated or inspired by different uh, Aboriginal and Native peoples. Is uh, Why is that? Well, first of all, I should say, uh, as a creative artist for life, 
I write about whatever seizes me. Um, so that could be anything. So let me say that first. But, you know, my father was Arawak Indian. And I'm, for years I studied what was done to Native people, not only here in Canada, but throughout the Americas. And so part of what I do as a maker of songs and other uh, creative things is to um, write about Native people of the Americas. And uh, that could be uh, about the Incas. I have a song about Atahualpa, the Inca emperor, uh, or the Native people from my original country, Guyana. Or it could be uh, the Native people of the Pacific Northwest here. Uh, so for me, uh, there's no limitation that you put upon yourself when you do this work. It's wide open, and you do it depending on how something seizes you strongly, and then you go do it. So that's what I do. So you've traveled uh, many number of places, and you've, uh, you're now here in Vancouver. What brought you here? Well, I love, uh, this is my home now, and I, I love living here. Um, this combination of mountains meeting with the ocean, for me, is the ultimate combination of an earth environment to live in. Uh, I feel strongly about that. I have about a 180 degree view from my mountains, and those mountains give me so much consolation, so much help just about every day of my life and their beauty. I'm all, I also am one of these people is, in my imperfect way, I walk in beauty. So I see beauty everywhere and it, in a way it starts with mountains. And then when I go and walk about in my neighborhood, it's in the flowers or, or people or whatever else. But uh, so uh, being open to the beauty for me is a balancing thing to counteract the horrors that are in our world. If I just thought about the troubles and the horrors, I would go sick. If I didn't counterbalance it with the beauty, which has always been simultaneously available to us human beings. So I walk open to the beauty all the time, and that too helps me in my life. So the uh, abundance of nature here is uh, something you don't take for granted, uh, I guess oh. coming from different places to here? I never take it for granted. And here, uh, everything is more bountiful. Seems the berries are bigger, the trees are bigger, the fish are bigger. You know, this is a very blessed part of the world and an uh, extremely beautiful part of the world. And for me, uh, having beauty in my environment nourishes me as an artist greatly. I remember before I, I moved to live here, I lived in Toronto. And I'm not going to bad talk poor Toronto, everybody slams Toronto, but all I can say is that environment did not nourish me. I came here to sing years ago. This environment started nourishing me from the time I came here. So I had to return here to live, and that's what I've done. Now, I've seen different um, kind of cultural struggles and in different uh, indigenous peoples across North America and coming into the west coast of BC, of which there are, there are struggles. Um, what parallels do you see, and also specifically within the salmon movement, uh, what have you seen? Parallels with what? Uh, different struggles between cultures, culture clashes, and how the, those kind of same Well, it's, there's certain central uh, underpinnings for the struggles of indigenous people throughout the world, you know, and of course throughout the Americas, uh, with the invasion and what the invasion brought. And um, a part of it, I think, is where the, the society at large, the dominant society, doesn't value the beauty and the power of what indigenous people, whether it's here or anywhere else in the Americas, have to offer. Because when, when you live in a society that's dollar dominated, that's what happens, it follows. So a lot of issues, whether it's a salmon or anything else, will spring out of that. The, the, the fixation of the dominant society on making money versus uh, the, the, the deep and ancient and beautiful cultures uh, traditionally of the people. So that, uh, that background sets up a lot of difficulties and therefore a lot of struggles right down the Americas. Uh, so do you think there can be a balance or will there always be uh, this conflict that will... Well, I'm, I'm an eternal optimist and uh, I, believe, I believe we human beings have the potential 
to become someday beautiful, magical, powerful, laughing, uh, living uh, creatures that we were always meant to be, we have been kind of retarded as a species. We've held ourselves back, but it's waiting for us to claim. So I believe someday, who knows exactly when, these, a new consciousness will emerge that will, uh, will uh, put those issues that we're still struggling with behind us. But for one thing, we can't go on like that indefinitely, you know, making the same mistakes, having the same bad attitudes and all that, and expecting a different result, you know. So uh, I think the time will come uh, when we will finally be liberated right across the board, everybody. But that, that's the vision, that's the wish. And of course, it has to be implemented <laughs> along the way.